painting water with watercolour. In this video I'm going to show you a really clever trick for capturing the sparkle on seawater and we're going to use these oil pastels. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle. If we haven't met before on this channel, you'll find art techniques and art business advice. So do consider subscribing. If you press the little bell notification, you'll also get notified every time I post a new video. Have you ever wondered how to capture that elusive quality of light sparkling on seawater in watercolours? Well, today I'm going to teach you how to do it. If you've been trying to do it using masking fluid, you're going to find this is a much, much better and more realistic looking effect. So do make sure you watch right until the end when I'm going to give you four extra tips for using this method successfully because although it's a simple method it does have its pitfalls and there's just a few things that you need to be uh, to be aware of and to watch out for in order that you get it working really successfully in your paintings. So here we are looking at some samples I've made and I've made some little skies and we're going to put some uh, some sea underneath them and we're going to use some oil pastel to capture the sparkle on the water. So I've got an oil pastel here. The first one is white. It is actually a pearlescent white and I'm going to pretend at this moment that um, I haven't just discovered that one of my students has wandered off with my white oil pastel. So normally you would use an ordinary white oil pastel for this. I am using this pearlescence one but it should still be okay. So what I'm going to do is apply it to the paper in horizontal fashion like so. Now what's going to happen here is the oil pastel is going to catch on the top of the bumps but it's not go, going to, uh, to sink into the little bumps in the paper. So what should happen now is as I apply the paint, the paint will go into the dips of the paper but it won't go on the bits that the wax has sat on, i.e. the top bits of the, um, the paper nap. So we're going to apply the blue here and you can see you're getting this lovely sparkling effect. Now obviously on a bigger painting it's going to look a bit more subtle than that. It looks huge on this little painting because I'm just using these small paper samples. But you can see how effective it is for capturing that sparkle on water. Now for this next sample we're going to do something a bit different. We're going to actually use a darker oil pastel. So I've got a dark blue here. And sometimes you get these little ripples on water and so it doesn't necessarily have to be that you're capturing the light sparkles. You could be capturing some dark ripples. Now, if you're wondering why we're not using masking fluid for things like this, it's because masking fluid I find is just far too harsh for painting water. It really almost, I mean, I've done it occasionally if I've been very, very careful, but it almost never works as well as using wax resist. So here I'm going to put dark on the paper and I'm going to apply some lighter blue paint. So let's just mix some of that up and away we go. So in this case it's the lighter colour that's going to sink between the pieces of dark oil pastel. Look how natural and lovely that looks. You just can't get these same techniques when you use something as harsh as masking fluid. Masking fluid is very overused when it comes to painting water. So I want you to try this wax resist method instead. Remember to keep watching until the end of the video because I've got those four tips for doing this effectively because there are one or two errors that people make with it which means that it doesn't look very natural. So here's my one with dark blue. Look at that, lovely. So in my final sample, I've got a sunset and what we're going to do this time is we're going to use the, uh, the orange and red oil pastels in order to capture that special sunlight um, that you get at sundown sparkling on the water. So I've got a red here and I'm actually going to almost kind of slightly mimic what I've got going on above. And then I've got some yellows and we can add some of those. So 
and I'm not going to take it all the way up this time not completely just leave a few gaps because the majority of it is down low Let's have a little bit of a different yellow in as well Now we're going to add that kind of bluish purple in the sky. So we want to be quite dramatic here. If you ever do this technique and you find that it's not really showing, it's often because you haven't gone dark enough with the paint. And I've covered so much of the paper, it's almost difficult to, uh, to get the paint in, but we're just going to keep rubbing across and it'll sink in in the end. Just want to get a bit more pink in that. It's rather bluer than I wanted it. Here we go. It's a bit puddly, so off camera I'm just going to dry my brush on some tissue paper and then with a drier brush just sweep across and that'll just lift up some of the excess moisture. I don't necessarily want any sort of back runs or drying lines in this. So you can see what a lovely effective technique it is for capturing that, uh, that evening sunlight on the water. At the beginning of this video I promised you four tips for helping you to make this method work effectively for you. So here we go. Tip number one is to use an old brush. This is not one of my best watercolour brushes. It's a great brush, one of my favourite type, um, but the point has gone a little bit. It's not brand new. And so you don't want to use your brand new watercolour brush because what happens is a little bit of that wax can come up onto your brush and it's not easily removed. So when you're using this technique, when you're applying the paint over the top of the pastel, I want you to use an old brush. Now tip number two is more a case of um, do as I do, not do as I say, because I was just doing samples here, so I didn't really bother to check carefully that my pastels were clean. But you do want to clean your oil pastels before you use them, because what can happen is you can get other um, colours on here, especially if you're using white. If you're using white and you've got green or pink or something on there, it's going to come off on your paper. And once the wax is on your paper, it's not ever coming off. So if you're doing this on a painting that you've got to be very careful of, that it's a special painting, do check that your pastels are clean first. You know, if necessary, scrape a bit off onto some tissue paper and just clean them up a little bit. Tip number three is to try this out first of all on a scrap of paper. So oil pastel is, is um, wax and it's permanent. And once you put it on your paper, it's not ever coming off. I've heard people try and do things with irons and melt it off, but it's not going to have um, a fantastic result for you. So it's really important that you try this technique out and that leads straight on to tip number four, which is apply it purposefully and don't scribble with it. So I've got a sample here that I made earlier and you can see I, I wasn't very sort of careful how I applied the oil pastel. I just scribbled it on roughly and made some circular marks every single one of those marks and mistakes is going to show up. So it's really, really important that you practice painting this on, drawing this on in a manner that's um, very, very flat and very horizontal. There may be occasions when you want to use this technique for things like fountains and waves in the foreground. It can be done like that, but you're going to have to practice it first. You can't just scribble because it's going to look very, very amateurish and it's not going to look um, effectively like water. So have you tried oil pastel resist with your watercolours before? Are you going to give it a go now that you've seen me do it? And if you're ready to take your creativity to the next level, do subscribe to the channel. I'll see you again in my art studio soon.